Today we bring to you Cheese Facts. Everything you wanted to know about cheese and were afraid to ask. Lovely cheese. Let's start with serving the cheese. When you are serving cheese, it should be kept in a chunk. Do not cut your cheese ahead of time. And I want to know who cut the cheese. Only cut the cheese that you expect to consume at that moment. This approach will avoid your cheese drying out. It's important to retain the moistness. How does it make you feel when I say the word moist? Cheese will taste best when eaten at room temperature. And with that in mind, bring your cheese from the refrigerator at least an hour or so before consuming. Give it time to mellow and for the fragrancy to begin to erupt from its pores. Cheese indeed is a living thing. Should you have leftover cheese, then you may wish to store it appropriately. Never freeze cheese. It will destroy its flavour and dry it out. Moist. This is not a good thing for cheese. Cheese, however, will respond well to being stored in your refrigerator. Unless, of course, you have a cheese cave, which is always desirable. If your cheese should happen to develop some surface mould, then do not be alarmed. This mould can simply be cut from the cheese and discarded. I cut the cheese in front of my girl once. I never heard the end of it. The cheese underneath will be perfectly edible and as delicious as always. If, however, you have blue cheese that has a vein of what appears to be mould running through it, do not attempt to cut this out. Blue cheese is designed to have this mould and it enhances and improves the flavour. It can be an acquired taste, however. When storing cheese, one must be careful never wrap cheese in plastic. This is an ideal way to encourage mould growth and to destroy the flavour of your cheese as it becomes over moist. Moist! Wrap your cheese in cheesecloth or cheese paper that will allow it to have some degree of interaction with oxygen so as it remains alive and vital, ready for your next consumption. An airtight container with possibly a little water inside it in a separate container itself would be a reasonable way to store cheese. This will retain the humidity in the storage container and therefore the cheese won't dry out. When serving, storing and handling cheese, you should try not to touch it, as any of the natural microbiome that you have on your fingers may indeed encourage mould growth on the cheese. The cheese is not a human. It may develop an unnatural mould. Therefore, if you can, avoid touching the cheese. Should you be taking your cheese on a trip, to visit friends for instance, or just for consumption at a later date, possibly in the sanctity of your own hotel room. What happens behind closed doors is of course kept behind closed doors. Cheese can travel successfully and without refrigeration, although it's always sensible to try and keep it in a cool environment. Possibly use a cooler, or if you're travelling by car, keep it in the air-conditioned cabin with you. If you have other people in the car, you may of course wish to keep the cheese in an airtight container, particularly if it's one of the more pungent variety. The fragrancy of the cheese may put some people off. Under no circumstances should the cheese ever be placed in the trunk or the boot, as we say here in the United Kingdom. This is not a suitable place for the cheese at all, and may result in cheese that has gone past its best. This would be an abomination. Like vampires, cheese should always be kept out of direct sunlight. It does not do well in these circumstances. If travelling by airplane, one must consider, one must consider, first of all, that you may not be allowed to take cheese over international borders. Cheese does not have access to its own passport 
and other countries can be quite finicky about you trying to bring cheese under the radar into their country. I would pack the cheese preferably in an airtight container and in some cheese paper or cheese cloth to keep it moist. Moist! Please, please stop. In your checked baggage, as this will be at a much lower temperature than the cabin and it will not attract unwanted glances from the other users of the airplane if the fragrancy of the cheese escapes into the cabin air. Let's look at some fun facts about cheese. From um, a web page in Wisconsin, which is the top cheese producer in the United States. In fact, to produce cheese in Wisconsin, you must indeed be licensed by the state. Wisconsin takes its cheese seriously. As you can tell from the point that they have a sporting team called the Cheeseheads. I believe their state motto is first in cheese. So Wisconsin makes approximately 26% of the country's cheese. Now, I've been eating a lot of cheese for some reason. I don't know what it is. I got a craving for this stuff. There may be some slight discrepancy here because some of the cheese that Americans think they are consuming isn't actually cheese. I must point out that cheese does not come in a tin and it certainly isn't spreadable like some kind of glutinous material on your toast. Cheese should be a solid item or a semi-solid item if one went for maybe a heated camembert. It's just a lot of cheese. It's an awful lot of cheese. There are approximately 1,290 licensed cheesemakers in Wisconsin, more than any other state in the United States. And it is the most stringent state standards for cheese making and overall dairy product quality. Wisconsin does indeed rank first amongst all states in the production of cheddar. American, brackets, this is not a cheese, mozzarella, brick, Munster and Limburger cheeses. Wisconsin is home to more than 126 cheese plants that produce more than 350 varieties of cheese. That's more than double that of any other state. These cheeses are made from milk from six different cattle breeds, one of them being Ayrshire. That's where I'm from, in Scotland. And then we have Brown Swiss, Guernsey, Holstein, Jersey and milking Shorthorn. I would like to point out that the Jersey cow comes from the Jersey Islands and not New Jersey. In an average day, a dairy cow will consume about 90 pounds of feed. It will also drink a bathtub full of water. It will produce about 5 to 6 gallons of milk, being milked twice a day. Those gallons of milk approximate to 340 to 350 squirts. Just think yourself lucky that we have milking machines now. And when it comes to making cheese, 10 pounds of whole milk to make one pound of cheese, compare that with 12 pounds of whole milk to make one pound of ice cream, and 21 pounds of whole milk to make one pound of butter. As you can see, if you wish to consume your milk in a more solid form, then cheese is more efficient than any other. Do you remember little Miss Muffet, who was sat on her tuffet, eating her curds and whey? There are questions in that that one has to think about, and I still don't know what exactly a tuffet is, but we won't pursue that. But curds and whey are indeed a stage in the cheese-making process and could be considered an early form of cottage cheese. I'll leave you with this interesting fact about the average American. They will eat more than 27 pounds of cheese each per year. That's 30% more than they would have 10 years ago. It is. Well, the guidebook says it's a must-see. Well, you lot ain't going up there. Pardon me? Why? I mean, 
It's all windy stairs. I'm not being funny. What exactly are you trying to say? What exactly am I trying to say? These are a bunch of fucking elephants. And some say there is an obesity problem in America. Surely not. An American will consume up to a ton of cheese during a lifetime. So with that, use these facts to keep your cheese properly, to serve it appropriately. You look after your cheese, and your cheese will look after you. We'll go somewhere where there's cheese. Cheese, Lancashire.